is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So do you ever struggle with creating dimension and layers with your alcohol inks? Alcohol inks are a fantastic medium, but sometimes it can be hard to get that variation in layers and that variation in depth. So in today's art journal page, I'm gonna show you how to add layers, how to subtract layers, and just how to create a really dimensional piece. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'll share with you a few cards I've also learned these techniques on. So let's get started. So the paper that I'm using today is craft plastic. It's something I've been working with a little bit more recently. It's a lot less expensive than you post. It's a really great choice for an art journal. And with this piece, this is just going to be added into my art journal when we've completed it. And that's just one way that I like adding alcohol inks to my art journal. Sometimes I also add them on top of mediums and straight into my art journal. And so I'm adding in a couple drops of color. So I'm gonna do more of a landscape scene today. That's the plan for this alcohol ink project. And I love adding a lot of alcohol and getting really beautiful movement with my alcohol inks. So this is where you can get very soft, very smooth backgrounds, or you can go in and push things out a bit more to create a little bit more texture to the background. So the texture can start from the very first layer. And I love this Pinata Senorita Magenta. If you see, it goes purple and it goes pink as it dries. And that for me is so wow. I love that variation in color. I feel like it adds so much more to the page. So I'm gonna add in a couple of drops of teal. And you can see that when it mixes with that magenta, you get that really pretty purple color. And I wanna move that up there a little bit more. I want to have a little bit more variation in my color. And so you can make the choice of just adding it more like clouds and a little bit more billowy, or you can have it really smooth. Really any of these mixes can work really, really nicely on your page. And as much as I'm making this little bit of a landscape, I'm making it quite a brilliant sky. And so you can see that by only using two colors, I've ended up with a fairly nice variation of color on my page. And if those lines are too harsh, you can always just add a little bit more alcohol, move things around a bit more. I'm just gonna continue on and just add my layers until I, I have the look that I want. And I've added quite a bit of alcohol. This may not be the way you wanna do things. You may wanna add a lot less alcohol. You may wanna blend it differently. And I find that every piece kind of takes on its own life. So I didn't really have a strong plan except I wanted to have certain colors on my background. I do want this fairly vivid just because of the way we're gonna be adding in layers. I find if it's super light, you only can do so many different things with layers and you have a little bit more darkness. It allows you to play a little bit more with lift ink and a few of these other inks. But at the same time, if you have a lighter background, then that lets you add a little bit more of the additive techniques that we're also going to get into today. And then if you have a bead of color along the bottom there, I like putting out a paper towel and just letting it drip off. And if you don't like those little drippy lines, again, you can just bring in your blower and just add in a little bit more blowing action just to get a different effect on that. So I ended up kind of making a mess here. <laughs> I had an edge that wasn't great. And then what I ended up doing is adding a little bit of alcohol. And the moment you add alcohol, it pulls around and pushes out the other alcohol that you've used. So now I'm gonna go in with my teal and a little bit of the magenta and try to fix. Sometimes this is one of those moments where you need to leave stuff. If you try to fix things, sometimes you don't make it better. <laughs> but in this case, I'm going to try to blend that out a bit. And it's gonna mix with the colors that you've already added below. And so this is another way of creating layers is that you basically just add another layer of color and that's gonna change what you've already done. I'm gonna add in a drop or drops of alcohol. And as long as I can kind of keep it moving, it doesn't necessarily make it worse. You can actually get a little bit more texture and make it look a little bit better. And in this case, you can see that if I do add more alcohol, because it does push things out, if you want more veins or you want darker and lighter colors or you want more texture, this is a way you can create it fairly easily. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of these harsh lines and it's kind of working, but I, I am having a little bit of trouble with this. This is why I usually try to stick with that one first layer if I'm doing landscapes, because it does help it look a little bit smoother. So I've lost some of that smoothness, but it does create some interesting spots in here as well. So depending on the look you're going for, it really does give you some options for creating really interesting effects. And you can see, because I'm blowing fairly hard, I'm getting those jagged edges. 
And you just need to blow a little bit less strongly with your little blower if you want something a little bit softer. So you want to make sure you let this dry completely before we move on to the next step. Um, if the ink is not fully dry, the next techniques you're going to have some trouble with, especially with the lift ink. The lift ink, you need to have a fully dry page to be able to get the effect that you want. Before we start moving on to the sky, I want to talk about how we can create more of a foreground. And so what I'm doing here is I'm taking my alcohol ink bottle and I'm going to assume that we're having a little bit of a foreground area. And by just adding a little bit of alcohol, that's dripping down. And now we're going to drip it off. So now we have a delineation between the sky and the foreground. So by doing that small thing, that goes a long way of just making this a little bit softer. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet by, by a long shot, but I wanted to show you how we can basically separate things uh, just so that we have a little bit better understanding of where this could go. This goes a long way when you're trying to figure out where to put trees and other things in your landscape. So you generally have an idea of where the foreground's going to start, where the background is, and everything in between. This is a little bit of a way of lightening it up. And this is where you could have gone darker. You could have added in, maybe I'll just do this just to show you. Or you could add in a little bit more ink. And let's say you wanted a, a hill here, and you wanted this to be a little bit stronger too. And you can see now that's blending down a little bit. And if I add in a little bit of alcohol, it's going to blend even more. And that's the beauty of alcohol inks. It's a very loose medium. But that, to me, gives a lot more sense of depth. So again, we're creating layers and depth just by adding and subtracting a little bit of color. I've been playing along with alcohol inks a lot lately. Uh, in the fall, I actually ended up doing a four week alcohol ink course and realized that I have a lot more to learn about alcohol inks, but I have a lot more to share as well. So I'm thinking I might do another one in the new year. And if you love alcohol inks and you'd be interested in seeing more of these techniques, sign up on my website for my newsletter. I usually include some free resources with that. But also it's an opportunity for you to be able to know when my next classes are, just so that if you are interested in going a little bit deeper with your knowledge, I do have a spot there that you can join in and learn some new things. So let's talk about adding in something into the sky. I want to add a couple of little stenciled areas into the sky. So what I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of alcohol, adding it to a sponge. I'm just adding two little squirts. It shouldn't be too wet. You want to pull up a little bit of color without causing too much bleed. And I'm using the other side of the sponge and then I'm just basically dabbing it off. And you can even gently rub. As long as you don't have too much alcohol on your sponge, this usually works pretty well. You can also do this with Lift Ink, but I like actually using the alcohol. I feel like it pulls a little bit more off. And as long as you're careful, you can usually do it without causing too many issues. So that one, you can tell it got a little bit too much alcohol. It's gotten a little bit soft, but these other ones, are working a little bit better. So I'm going to add in this one as well. I'm just going to give that a quick rub. This is a very soft sponge, so I can rub a little bit more than I usually would. On the, on the areas with a little bit more ink, you're going to have to rub a little bit more, add a little bit more just to pull up that color. And the color may not all come up. So another way of adding subtractive texture is using alcohol lift ink. And so my alcohol lift ink pad is a little bit grosser than normal. Uh, some of that is sometimes what I end up doing is I have a little bit of leftover ink on my stamp and then it just ends up making my pad a little bit gross, but that's okay. I'm adding in a little bit of ink there. I'm adding a little bit of the alcohol lift ink on this side as well. And when you go in, you'll notice that there's a very slight pattern, but when you put this on a piece of white paper, it basically lifts the ink, giving you an image that you can use on another project. So that's the booty of the lift ink. The key to lift ink is you need to let it set for a minute. And I've now let mine set for a minute. And what I'm gonna do is come over it with toilet paper. You don't wanna use paper towel for this. You wanna use toilet paper. And what you should run into is you do get a little bit of lifted ink again. And this side, I'm doing the same thing. And that's gonna lift a little bit of it as well. And now you wanna come in and you wanna rub gently. The areas that have a lot of ink, you're gonna notice are gonna resist the lift ink. But the areas with a much more smoother application of lift ink, it's going to be removed. So those are two subtractive techniques. So instead of adding onto the surface, we're removing from the surface. And I'm gonna add in a few more subtractive techniques. 
And this is going to be using a set of small trees. And I'm gonna go back to using my alcohol lifting. And because I've made a bit of a ridge there, I want to look like I have trees that are on the ridge top. Because when you're doing landscapes, one thing to realize is that Anything that is far away is gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, less detailed, and less vibrant. It's usually the darkest color that's closest to you. And sometimes that's the challenge with alcohol inks is getting that variation in color. Sometimes it can look all the same color, which is why we really wanna play around with these trees and these different shapes and see what we can come up with. You just have to look carefully to figure out where you left your trees. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little hard to see. You just need to see where a little bit of the glare is and that can help a little bit. So my favorite ink to use when trying to add in a little bit of additive techniques is stays on ink. The reason I like stays on is unlike archival ink, archival ink will be resisted by some of the colors while the stays on ink will always go on top. Now we have a nice, really contrasting tree. And because I've done it just a little bit off of the white there, it does help it stand out a little bit more. Sometimes I care that the stamping is perfect and other times I don't mind that there's a little bit of a shadow. So I really think that drop shadows when it comes down to alcohol inks look really nice. A little bit of extra contrast, a little bit of extra texture goes a long way. So originally gonna use white paint for this, but now I've realized that because of the colors that I've chosen, I've gone fairly light in color already. So I'm gonna use the black instead of white paint to add in a little bit more details. And that's the thing is I really like using white paint. What white paint does is it helps it stay a little bit more contrasting and a little bit more on top of things, which provides a different look than the subtractive techniques. And what I would have done differently with this one is these three are a little bit too much in a row, but I'm gonna adjust that by using a paintbrush. I think I wanna have one more tree in here because this does look further away. This looks closer, but then by adding in a little bit of overlapping, this is a way of just really pulling something out as being this is forward and this is back. I'm gonna add in one more little tree. I keep adding trees. I love the trees though, so I'm fine with a few extra trees in my landscape. And that's why I like these Tim Holtz tree line stamps. They work amazing for creating little landscapes like this. The thing with the stays on is you need to give it time to dry. So I don't want to add anything on top of these yet just because it's going to smudge. But what I will do is take my liner brush and add a few details connecting the landscape to the ground. So I'm gonna use my pitch black alcohol ink. I'm just gonna dab a little bit of alcohol ink onto my palette there. I'm going to roll my liner brush in it and that's gonna to get to a very fine point. And now I'm just adding in some little lines. And this way you can add some shadows to the bottom of those trees. And that's a way of grounding them in the landscape. I love these little trees, but I find some of them, it's like the way the trunks are, they just kind of stick there. And to me, they always look like they're floating. So a little bit of alcohol ink goes a long way just to help those trees seem more grounded. Just by even adding in a few little bits there. What that does is it, instead of it feeling like this is floating and this is floating, now it feels like everything is part of a landscape. And I'm adding in a one drop of the sapphire to that black alcohol ink. I like this black, but it can be a fairly flat black. So by adding in a little bit of dark blue, when you mix them together, it's also gonna give you a different variation. And I think I like that a little bit more. I think that matches almost a bit more with what I've done so far with this background. So you can always add layer on layer. If you find something's not quite working, add another layer, see how it looks. So we're creating little valleys, we're creating little high spots and low spots. That's a great way of adding dimension. And if you find that your alcohol ends up drying a little bit too fast on your brush, you can always add alcohol to it, but realize that that's going to start muting the color a little bit and it's gonna change the colors that you're adding. So I really like where that's gone so far, but I'm not done yet. I feel like we can still add more layers. <laughs> So I think it's always important we take a minute to sit back and look at our project because as I've just been sitting back and looking at this as it's been drying, I decided I wanted to actually show you how you can add some paint into this. So I wanted to add all is calm, all is bright uh, onto this page. To do that, I want this to stick out from this white background, but I didn't necessarily want to do it in black. So I'm gonna try it with white paint and a set of stamps. 
And the important thing when you're using white paint, I'm using it on a palette paper here, is that you want to go backwards. I'm using cursive letters. And one thing I've realized with cur cursive letters is you actually want to spell them backwards and start from the edge and work your way in. That way you never run out of room when you're stamping. Otherwise it gets interesting. And so I'm just adding in a little bit of paint to my brayer. I do not have my little brayer on hand, otherwise I'd be using a little brayer for this. It does work a little bit better. This is my solution because my brayer is a little bit on the big side. I'm going to put it out on my palette and then stamp it onto my page. And I kind of squish that one, but that's okay because I can fix it later. You have to be very careful when you're stamping. I should have a smaller stamping block because I don't at the moment. We'll work with this one as it is, but I'm just gonna use the corner here. It's gonna be like it a little bit easier for me to handle it and use it on the page. And so you can see how that sticks out from the background. And every time you use a stamp with paint, you wanna make sure you use a baby wipe to clean it off right away. Otherwise you're going to end up with some issues. It's gonna stick to the surface and it's not going to work very well. So for this project, I wanted to put in the words, all is calm, all is bright. And the reason for that is I was thinking about the song, Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. I was thinking about that carol and thinking about finding that calmness and that joy at Christmas. And more specifically, how do we find that calm and joy? It can be so easy to just get so busy with the buying and the events and all these other things that are going on. I know even for myself, I'm struggling with finding that balance between the calm of Christmas and the busy of Christmas. And that's always a challenge. So for this page, I was thinking about what's my intention for Christmas and what would I like to have Christmas be? And what am I going to do to make that be the Christmas that I actually have? And when I was talking with my husband about it, we were talking a lot about like, well, what do we want? How busy do we want to be? How do we want to connect with people? And it's not about not seeing people. It's not about not connecting, but it's making sure that we have the time and the space that we're really present there, that we can be loving and we can be in the moment and enjoy the time with the people that we love, but then also have time for rest and have time for the things that are important to us. This holiday season, I'm trying to have a little bit of both. I've done a few things to try to help myself be prepared for Christmas in a way that's not stressful. I started decorating the house for Christmas at the beginning of November. And that's not usually my typical practice, but I was thinking about how much I wanted to get things done, but between teaching and all the other things that I'm doing, how was I going to do that in a way that was going to be really mindful and how I was going to enjoy the experience over it being a rush and a have to do and something that's done at the last minute in stress. I've been really thinking about the ways that I can try to simplify my Christmas. I can try to make things better and be able to be present for those around me. What is your plan for your holiday season? Have you thought about your intention for Christmas? Or do you even have an intention? Or is that something you even think about? I'd love to know what you think about what I've shared and what your intention is and maybe what you want to do to try to make this Christmas more meaningful for you. Okay, so here's my finished page. So what I ended up doing is I added in on the drop shadow, a little bit of paint marker, and that just helped that stick out a little bit more. I like that the paint actually didn't go perfectly on it. I like the texture of the paint. And you'll notice that with white paint, it does pick up the color of the alcohol inks. There's always the nature of alcohol inks. They're always gonna soften up any of the paint that you add, any of the other colors that you add. So I put in all is calm, all is bright, and I put in the corner here, this is my hope, for this Christmas season. And that's just my reminder to me, to try to slow down a little bit. And I also ended up adding in the star here. I wanted to refine that star a little bit more. So you can see that now what we have is a very detailed layered piece. So I also wanted to show you a couple cards. And with both of these cards, you can see that with this one I've added in the die cut, I actually added in a couple layers of white cardstock underneath it, just to pop it a little bit from the background. And then this one here, I ended up basically just doing the background, adding in the lift ink and pulled it off. And so you can see that just by doing that and then just adding a sediment, you have a really beautiful Christmas card. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this. You can use it in your art journal and do it larger. You can do it smaller in a card. There's so many options out there, but there's just so many different ways that you can take those alcohol ink backgrounds and do more with them. So if you're interested in the supplies that I used for this project, look at the description below. I include all the colors and all the supplies that I used. 
And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you're looking for another video about alcohol inks, click here. This is one where I use alcohol inks to make Christmas ornaments. And this one's been quite popular lately and people have been really enjoying it. So I hope that you'll check it out and I will see you in the next video.